Yes, you are God and God alone. Mighty you are the walls group right here on Guts. That's when I say a variety talk show, Christian point of view, hoping you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. I'm your host, Nikki V. And we do thank you so much for tuning into the broadcast and being a part of what God is doing right here and right now. We are going back to our series, uh, A Promise to Sarah. And we will be endeavoring, we actually concluded our winning attitude series. And we're going now and getting into, or we'll be getting into, developing the leaders around you series, uh, creating leaders while we lead. And uh, for those of you who are not leaders, it's still going to be relevant to you because now you'll know how to follow. So we're going to be giving instruction on uh, become, creating better leaders and creating better leadership because it really, as the body of Christ, we are all leaders. Even if we are just considered members in the benches and the pews, we still have leadership quality or we are still uh, part of a leadership branch because uh, we are the head and not the tail. Okay, so we have to be prepared to lead people and, and to know how to lead people and what it means to lead people. And we do not want to be authority abusers, but we want to be those who uh, utilize the authority that's been given to us uh, in the way it ought to be used. So we just thank God for that. And now, God communicates with Abel and during the series and series text. Uh, we begin in the midst of God's communication with Abram. Twenty-four years had passed since God made his initial promise to Abram. And God was explicit about the details of the promise. God changed Abram's name to Abraham to reflect that he would be the father of many nations. There would be kings in his lineage. God would be there for him always. And Canaan would be their land forever. Now as a sign of his covenant, Abraham, Abraham and all the males of his house were circumcised and Thereafter, each male would be circumcised at eight days old. Something that we want to learn from the Bible as we go through the series is that Abraham and Sarah saw the birth of their child as evidence of God's faithfulness. They were able to see this as something that tells us that God is faithful. We can recognize the faithfulness of God when we uh, 
aware of what he has promised us and what he says he will do. Now Sarah's barrenness was definitely, definitely an issue. Each time God spoke with Abraham in the past, he never mentioned Sarah. We know that she was barren, which would have made God's covenant impossible. Abraham was perplexed by the situation. Oh, sovereign Lord, what good are all your blessings when I don't even have a son? Since you've given me no children, Eliezer of Damascus, a servant in my household, you inherit all my wealth. You have given me no descendants of my own, so one of my servants will be my heir. However, God reassured his servant that his heir would be of his flesh. This would have been devastating news for Sarah. So we're going to be talking about, we talked about Abram and his dealings with God. And now we're going to be entering into a look at Sarah and her prom and the promise God gave her and how she reacted and what she did and things of that nature. But before we go there, we want to talk to you a little bit and share with you some things that are going on. I told you I was going to give you the information about the guy who cuts grass and I, I do want to give it to you, but you know what I forgot to do? And get the information together before I left. And so, um, once again, I have to tell you that we're going to talk to you about a man who can cut your grass, Christian guy, a faithful brother in the Lord who is doing a tremendous job for the body of Christ and is a tremendous witness for Jesus Christ. His name is Alan, and I've got to get his number out uh, that somebody can uh, let uh, let somebody know. It could be that Alan's listening now. You are listening now, Alan, and you're able to call me and, and say your phone number for us so that we can give that information out to the people. That would be wonderful. The number to call is 877-217-5375. That's 877-217-5375. Now, Alan did give me his business card. He gave me all of the information. Again, I love to be able to support Christian uh, businesses, Christian organizations. I also love to support organizations that support us, that partner with us, that help us to fight hunger or anything that we are, are endeavoring to challenge against. Like I said before, Panera uh, Bakery Restaurant is doing a great work for us, and they are also endeavoring in this month, because it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, uh, to raise funds that will be donated to breast cancer research to Memorial Regional Cancer Institute. And these Go Pink mugs, as well as every bagel, uh, will be a way in which they will actually give back to the community. And they give back on a continual basis. So when I see uh, companies and organizations that are consistent in giving back to the community, I always want to make sure and let people know that you should uh, really kind of support those kind of companies, that kind, that kind of business. So uh, this month, it, you can go to any Panera, but I, I definitely encourage you to go to the one on Federal Highway just north of Commercial and south of Imperial Point Hospital, right there on Federal Highway, uh, pretty much almost across the street from a Red Lobster. I uh, don't have its, their actual address. Just know where they are. And... Um, it's in, in the Imperial Plaza over there. And they are the ones that uh, directly help us do what we do in, in feeding. And so you can um, go there and help support them as they endeavor to uh, supply and help with cancer research. Every mug is eleven ninety five, but every $3 of that goes towards the research. And, of course, you also have the opportunity, so I would admonish you to go quickly because we are in the second week. October to be able to enjoy the free cup of coffee that comes every time you bring the mug back in to a Panera. So you'll be able to get a free cup of coffee. And I tell you, they've got some great coffee. I love their hazelnut coffee and their dark roast. I'm not a big, big coffee drinker, but I tell you, it is a fabulous coffee there at Panera. And so we are encouraging you all. And they have a fantastic uh, bagel that they presented for this month, Cancer Awareness, the Pink Ribbon Bagel. And it is a cherry vanilla flavored bagel. And it is shaped in the shape of a pink ribbon, or I should say a ribbon, because it's not really pink, but it, it is delicious. And I would encourage you to uh, make your purchase and support them as they support uh, the Memorial Regional Cancer Institute. Now, we're going to talk about developing 
uh, the leaders around you. That's something that we're going to endeavor to uh, discuss. But before we go there, I want to kind of give you a real quick look at the 10 things that we would need to know for today. And that is, I will look at uh, late breaking news, upcoming events, and stories that will be talked about on today. Well, first thing is three researchers won Nobel Prize in medicine. Their work helped scientists understand how cargo is delivered to the right place at the right time inside cells. Number two, Libya wants clarifications on abduction. A day after special forces kidnap a suspected al-Qaeda figure, the government is asking the U.S. questions and saying Libyans should be tried at home. Number three, Elizabeth Smart recounts nine months of hell. In my story, she details her 2002 kidnapping at age 14 from her bedroom in Salt Lake City. Number four, U.S. edges closer to first ever default. Yes, Boehner again rules out a House vote on a straightforward bill to boost the nation's debt limit without concessions from President Obama. Number five, Kerry praises Assad on weapons destruction. The U.S. Secretary of State says the Syrian president deserves credit for his country's speedy compliance. Number six, no punishment for mishandling funds. NAP analyst shows Indian tribes have been caught misappropriating millions of taxpayers' dollars but suffer few consequences. Number seven, monster truck rams crowd in Mexico. Eight are dead and dozens injured after the vehicle sh shoots into a crowd of spectators and the governor says a test had detected alcohol in the driver's breath. Number eight, now North Korea is showing its moxie, a ski resort. Never mind that only 5,500 of the country's 24 million people participate in the sport. But leader Kim Jong-un is among them. Number nine, moving on from the Boston bombing, victims who lost legs in the deadly attack are learning how to run again with prosthetics. That's some great news, isn't it? And number 10, what Joe Torre is looking forward to next year. The Major League Baseball's executive vice president is hopeful the expanded instant replay system will be ready in 2014. And that's the top 10 things that you ought to know about for this day that you will hear about uh, throughout the day and that we will be informed of uh, concerning the things that are going on within the day. So we do thank God for you all who are tuned into the broadcast and we hope that you'll continue to tune in Monday through Friday and or say Monday and Thursday because we are really kind of on a different time shift or a different place now. Uh, I really would love to come to you all on a daily basis like I was but things are changing and changing for me in a way that does not allow me to do that. But we do thank God for you all who are tuned into the broadcast. We hope you continue to tune in and be a part of what God is doing right here and right now. You are encouraged to stick close and stick by. The number to call to join in the conversation, 877-217-5375. That's 877-217-5375. And uh, we thank God for you all tuning into the broadcast and being a part of what God is doing right here and right now. We hope that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. We will be right back.
Yes, he knows just what you're going through. It's Stephen Toby Lewis and a uh, project known as New Creation. Right here on Guts Gospel, we have to save a variety talk show with a Christian point of view, hoping that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. I'm your host, Nikki B. And we do thank you so much for tuning into the broadcast. As we said, we were going to uh, come back and talk to you a little bit about developing the leaders around you. And uh, we do thank God for that as we endeavor to talk about developing the leaders around you. Some of the things we want to deal with is the leader's key question, am I raising up potential leaders? Uh, the toughest question, creating a climate for potential leaders. Uh, the leader's primary responsibility, identifying potential leaders. A crucial task, nurturing potential leaders and a leader's daily requirement, equipping uh, potential leaders. Uh, the lifelong commitment is developing potential leaders. A leader's highest return is forming a dream team of leaders. Uh, the leader's greatest joy is coaching the dream team of leaders. The leader's finest hour, realizing value to and from the leaders. The leader's lasting contribution is reproducing generation of leaders. And so we're going to be dealing with that throughout this uh, next set of series that we're going to be doing, or the continual series. We have a, a week-to-week -week series, and then this is our perpetual series that goes on maybe for about a month or so. And so we thank God for uh, these uh, series and, and these different ways that we're endeavoring to talk to you all. Many of you all said that you wanted to have uh, a little bit of information on self-help and development um, as well as uh, scripture analysis and, and word study. So we're going to bring things to you that will help uh, develop who you are, develop character, and help you to develop character in others. So here we are and we're talking about uh, the very first part of our series which is the leader's key question, am I raising up potential leaders? Am I actually nurturing people to become uh, leaders? Or, or am I afraid to do that? Because sometimes people don't want to because they don't want the person that's going to come take their spot. And, you know, job security and all. That's how we operate because we've been trained to operate like that. 
but it, it's interesting to note and we ought to think about the fact that we ought to be raising up potential leaders. Now, um, John Maxwell, one night after working quite late, grabbed a copy of Sports Illustrated, hoping its pages would kind of relax and put him to sleep. And in reality, it had the opposite effect. On the back cover was an advertisement that caught his eye and got him emotional, it got his emotional juices flowing. It featured a picture of John Wooden, the coach who led the UCLA Bruins for many years. The caption beneath the picture read, The guy who puts the ball through the hoop has ten hands. Now, John Wooden was a great basketball coach called the Wizard of Westwood. He brought 10 national basketball championships to UCLA in a span of 12 years. Two back-to-back -back championships are almost unheard of in the competitive sports world, but he led the Bruins to seven titles in a row. It took a consistent level of superior play. It took good coaching. It took hard practice. But, you know, the key to Bruins' success was Coach Wooden's unyielding dedication to the concept of teamwork to the concept of teamwork. He knew that if you oversee people and you wish to develop leaders you are responsible to, one, appreciate them for who they are. First thing that you ought to do if you're going to develop leaders, you are, this is a responsibility that you must take as a leader, is appreciate them for who they are. Appreciate those who work with you for who they are. Believe, number two, that they will do their very best. Believe that the people who are working with you are going to do their very best. Now, you ought to have some people who are going to do their very best. You ought to not just have whoever, so, whosoever will, but you ought to really try to recruit people who, will, who are giving their very best. Number three, praise their accomplishments. Give them kudos. Don't just give them criticism. Give them kudos as well as criticism. And four, accept your personal responsibility to them as their leader. Number four, accept your personal responsibility to them as a leader. Sometimes we don't take that responsibility. We blame everybody for everything else and we don't take the responsibility that we are the one in charge. Now, Coach Bear Bryan expressed this same sentiment when he said, I'm just a plow hand from Arkansas. But I have learned how to hold a team together, how to lift some men up, and how to calm others down, until finally they've got one heartbeat together as a team. There's always just three things I say. If anything goes bad, I did it. If anything goes semi-good, then we did it. And if anything goes really good, then they did it. That's all it takes to get people to win. Bear Bryant won people and games until a few years ago. He had the greatest number of wins in the history of college football. Great leaders, the truly successful ones, who are in the top 1%, all have one thing in common. They know that acquiring and keeping good people is a leader's most important task. An organization cannot increase its productivity, but people can. The asset that truly appreciates within any organization is people. Systems become dated, buildings deteriorate, machinery wears, but people can grow, develop, and become more effective if they have a leader who understands their potential value. So the bottom line and the essential message of developing leaders around you is that you can't do it by yourself. If you really want to be a successful leader, you must develop other leaders around you. You must establish a team. You must find a way to get your vision seen, implemented, and contributed to by others. The leader sees the big picture, but they need other leaders to help make this mental picture a reality. Most leaders have followers around them. They believe the key to leadership is gaining more followers. Few leaders surround themselves with other leaders the ones who do bring great value to their organization. And not only is their burden lightened, but their vision is carried on and enlarged. Acquiring and keeping good people is a leader's most important task. 
Now, there's a thing that you need to know. Why leaders need to reproduce leaders? Seems like in churches we want our leaders to produce members. Isn't that nice? But the truth is, our leaders should be producing leaders. Members bring members. That's hard, isn't it? Doesn't sound, doesn't sound right, does it? Because that's not how we operate, is it? The key to surrounding yourself with other leaders is to find the best people you can, then develop them into the best leaders they can be. Great leaders produce other leaders, and let me tell you why. Those closest to the leaders will determine the success level of that leader. They just will. They will determine the success level of that leader. Don't believe me? Surround yourself with the right kind of people. It will make a difference. Surround yourself with the right kind of people. Create leaders while you're leading and see if it doesn't make a difference. Just think about it. It makes all the difference in the world when you think about it. When you give it an opportunity. And you really begin to let it take root in your spirit and in your soul and in your mind. By the way, you are tuning into Guts Gospel Not Safe, a variety talk show with a Christian point of view, hoping that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. This Saturday, we will not be, that's Saturday, October 12th, we will not be distributing groceries on that Saturday. Uh, we are in the process of doing some reorganizing, restructuring, and lots of things that are going on in the churches within our jurisdiction. And so, uh, we will actually not be distributing groceries October 12th. But we will be back on the 19th, and uh, we thank God for that. This October, by the way, not only is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but it's also Pastor or Clergy Appreciation Month. So in case some of you want to say a big how do you do and hello, and uh, wish your uh, pastors a great appreciation, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, and also, if you have an appreciation announcement and you want to call them and say, hey, look, our, uh, we're celebrating our pastor on such and such a day, then please do it. Uh, for us at the Fort Lauderdale Multicultural Church of God Christ, we'll be celebrating uh, Superintendent Roger A. Grimes on October 13th at uh, 5 p.m. And uh, we'll be going to the World Fiesta. However, it may be a little too late for anybody to get in on that uh, event that we do be able to participate. Tickets are $50. And uh, we do thank God for those of you who, would, who are going and make a choice of chicken, chops, or salmon. And uh, we're expecting a great and grand time in the Lord. Uh, I was planning on doing something wonderful, but I think I'm going to have to change uh, the skit to something else. But we do thank God for you all who are tuned into the broadcast and who are listening in and who are getting prepared and ready. Things are coming up. Got climb coming up. Uh, we have our... Missions weekend, November 1st and 2nd. We've got Trunk or Treat uh, on the 31st, which is our Hallelujah Night celebration. We've got so much going on. You tune into Guts. I'm Nikki V. Hoping you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. The Flint Cavaliers, same God, right here on Guts. That's what I'm saying. <laughs>